That's right. That's right. Your very own Kimu Juja, live in the flesh. How are you all doing, ladies and gents? Today, I'm going to be doing the unthinkable. I'm joining the dark side and becoming a study tuber. Now, you all know how I feel about study tubers. I could never be a study tuber, you know? I mean, I reckon I could teach the right things and I could teach, like, pretty well. But, I mean, I could never fit into that, like, to that box of the, of the classic, like, oh, middle class white vlogger. They're so positive, man. Why are you so positive? I mean, how? How are you so motivated all the time? I don't get you. But it's for the views. And also, it's only temporary, only for two videos. But if you like them, I could do more. You know what I mean? I, I've already filmed this video. It was like 40 minutes of filming, but I'm going to do it again because the framing was dreadful. In this video, I'm going to talk you through my admissions process for Cambridge leading up to the rejection. Let's go. This is the video. I'm going to talk about my stats, you know, what GCSEs and A-level predictions I've got, and then I'll talk about the personal statement, admissions assessment, interview, rejection. Let's do it. First of all, my stats, GCSEs, I got all nines minus one. I was a mark off a nine in history. And then the FSMQ additional maths, I think that's freestanding maths qualification, I got an A. And before you flame me for not getting an A star, an A is the highest you can get, right? So pipe down. All right, there's a lot of glare on my glasses from the light, so go on without the glasses now. And then my UCAS A level predicted is A star, A star, A, A, because I do four A levels. I do physics, biology, maths, and chemistry. And my predicted was two A stars in maths and physics and an A for bio and chem. Now let's start off with the personal statement. Now I applied for natural sciences. Uh, that's what Cambridge calls the science subjects, by the way. So biology, physics, and chemistry are all grouped into natural sciences if you apply for Cambridge. I don't know, I guess I just like to be different and quirky. Don't know what that's about. But anyways, as I was saying, I applied for natural sciences, physical, and so that's what I oriented my personal statement about. Now, honestly, I don't see the fuss over personal statements. I don't get why people get so stressed. Like, I did now what I write. Like, oh my God, how do I even start it? Like, like, honestly, I think I had my first draft done in about 20, 30 minutes, right? Uh, because it was lockdown, we had nothing to do. One of my friends got his first draft done in like July. That's just psycho behavior. I don't, you don't need to go that far. I think I got my first draft done around like end of August, start of September around that time. And because Oxbridge and medicine application deadline is October 15th, instead of everything else, which is January 15th, I had to get mine done a lot quicker. So naturally I would have had my personal statement done earlier anyways. Now the personal statement, Honestly, just don't deep it. All you gotta do is make sure that your interest for the subject is prevalent, right? You should mention stuff you've done, like, oh yeah, I read this book, I read this documentary. I read this documentary? What is going on up here? I watched this documentary, I did this, I did that. This led me to research about this or read about this. This taught me about whatever, which made me more interested in my subject. You know what I mean? Always link it back to why that makes you interested in your subject. And I think for Oxbridge, it's about 90% of your statement should be academic and then 10% should be your personal hobbies. I don't know if it's okay to put your personal statement online, but I do not care. So here's mine. Take from what you will considering, even though I did get rejected, it did get me through to the admissions assessment and the interview and I did get accepted by all four of my other unis which were Imperial, UCL, Kings and Newcastle. So take from that what you will. Now I say personal statements shouldn't be that much of a fuss but I did get a lot of help and the way that worked is me and one of my friends both applied for Cambridge, we both got rejected and it's not like I'm baiting that out because none of you know who he is so it's fine but yeah we both applied for Cambridge, both got rejected and we had both applied and been accepted into this thing called CASP, C-A-S-P, the Cambridge Applicant Support Programme which is an eight week course thingy that pairs you up with a mentor who's in Cambridge who'll help you through the application process. I had a lovely girl called Erin who's currently doing biology, uh, natural sciences at Cambridge. But I mean, considering the fact we both got rejected, how much did it really help? I'm just kidding. In terms of personal statement, my mentor absolutely ripped mine to shreds and it was so, so helpful, honestly. My teachers looked through it, they were useless. Like, E, that's a brilliant personal statement, that's lovely. E, well done, well played, squire. One of my teachers did actually say those words, absolute legend. One time, me and my friend were in a call and she looked through my personal statement and also managed to rip the shreds and find stuff that I would never have thought about correcting, that all the teachers missed, right? Same with my mentor. She ripped mine to shreds many, many times. Everything that the teachers missed. Always get multiple sources to check through your personal statement, please. Because if you just rely on teachers or just rely on this, just rely on, it won't get anywhere, honestly. My first draft and my last draft look completely different, as it should. All right, that's the personal statement out of the way. Now, the admissions assessment, the dreaded admissions assessment, not gonna lie. 
this is the hardest test that you're gonna do. Actually, I say that, I don't know anything about the BMAT or the TMUA or any other stuff that you've gotta do for other application processes, so ignore what I've just said, but it will be one of the hardest tests you ever do. It's designed so that no one can get 100%, right? It's really, really difficult. And the first half is like 90 seconds per question, and the second half is like two minutes per question or something like that, I don't know. I looked through some past papers, I tried to do some questions, right? It wasn't looking good. <laughs> But two things got me through it. Number one, the thing that got me through all my STEM subjects I've ever done is the fact that there is a specification. If you look at the spec, they cannot possibly, they just cannot ask you any questions about anything outside the spec. The spec is a list of things, every possible thing they could ask you about. It's just a matter of the time and effort you're willing to put into learning every point in that spec, right? Yeah, having the spec and the second thing, the mindset. Honest to God, I thought, right, if I fail, I fail. It's not the end of the world, right? I wasn't expecting an email back asking to be invited back to an interview, okay? Your mindset is a very important thing that I'm gonna to touch on multiple times throughout this process. It was like a 30, 40 minute drive to the test center. Luckily, I didn't crash from stress, right? I actually pride myself on not getting stressed in situations purely because of that mindset I've just mentioned. But anyways, if we're rating on a confidence scale of one to 10, right? Quarter of the test was a seven. Another quarter was, I'd say a four. And then honestly got half of the test, or may, probably more, was just complete random guesses. Either the questions were too difficult or I ran out of time, so I just put random, like it's multiple choice, which makes it very easy to just put random guesses for half of it. And you know, it must be good enough to get invited back for an interview, so there you go. Now next step, the interview. Now the email to get an invitation for an interview, I got mine so late. I got mine like maybe, 5th, 6th December with my interview on the 15th. Most people had gotten their emails by the end of November, right? So I was just thinking, right, what's going on then? The thing that got us through it was again mindset. I thought, right, I haven't gotten an interview, but I haven't been rejected yet. I mean, you know, I may well have been rejected, but not yet. And that was what was keeping us positive. And then finally I got my email saying, all right, you've been accepted for an interview. Uh, it's online obviously, which is a real shame. I really genuinely think that I would have been so much better in person. I would have been able to show like my character, the energy that I give off. But anyways, we move. Now the interview itself, right? Now obviously once it was done, a lot of people asked us how it went and I had the same answer for everyone. It was bang on average. It wasn't brilliant, it wasn't terrible, right? And honestly, I'm disappointed. Not in myself, don't get us twisted, right? I'm disappointed in them for their interview process because I prepped so hard, right? I uh, printed out my personal statement, I highlighted everything they could possibly ask about me, right? I was like, oh yeah, I need to uh, make sure I've brushed up on this, on this, on this. They didn't ask me a single question about any of that in my interviews. It was purely academic. It was like, first interview, right? Can you answer this math question, this math question, this physics question? Second interview, you've got half an hour pre-reading. These are some questions. Afterwards, we'll hop on a call and talk about it for half an hour. That's what it was like. No personal questions in the slightest. So I was severely disappointed that none of my prep went into that. I read three books in the span of like five days for that interview, which thinking back on it, it sounds tragic. But actually not that tragic because I did actually enjoy the books and they're pretty interesting. Bit of a letdown and obviously wasn't good enough to make the grade. But yeah, that was the interview. And that was that, the interview process done. Now everyone who applies to Cambridge gets their result back, whether they got an offer or a rejection, January the 25th. So January 25th, got an email, you've been rejected. And honestly, the most important thing if you do get rejected is the mindset, right? I pride myself on having a good mindset, whatever the situation is, right? And I just thought, genuinely, I just thought, right, it's not the end of the world. Staying positive is one of the most important things, right? To anything, never mind uni applications. I like my mindset to be realistic. So I was like, yeah, I probably won't get in. These are my other options. Life is still good. And personally for me, going down south was always the aim anyways. And as I said before, I did get accepted into King's, Imperial and UCL, which are all in London. And my dream is to go to London. So dream, consider it fulfilled. And that is my mindset. I've been able to stay positive throughout the whole thing. All my teachers have asked us, oh, are you okay? How are you finding the rejection? I've been like, honestly, only positive vibes, just positivity, nothing else. I'm focusing on the opportunity I've got, Never mind the ones that I don't, and that is a mindset that you should be having. Anyways, that was my journey of how I got rejected from Cambridge. I really hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, that's my first YouTube video out of the way. Let us know if you enjoyed.